lifetime of decision what is there to show a few years been and gone perhaps a few years left to go there's a difference between living and discovering the truth i've done too much of the former it's been a quite attractive youth but when it comes down to the latter i'm an infant nothing more finding that's a little matter for my soul my mind my body to don't decide and the voice says don't decide and make no choices don't decide and you'll finally get it right I say that's counter to everything I've ever learned. I'm supposed to be ambitious. I'm supposed to always hear. I thought every day I'm meant to climb a little higher than before. To be just a little better known. To own a little more. But that's all smoke and mirrors. What I Next move I should make. It's the next path I'm supposed to choose. Don't decide if the voice says. Don't decide if your choice is. Don't decide and you'll finally get it right. Doesn't make no sense at all. It's a deceptively simple call. When I'm old and nothing, only then I'll have it all. Guess I'll see. says don't decide make no choices don't decide and you'll finally get it right don't decide voices don't decide make no choices Good morning and welcome. Um, I'm Reverend G, Minister at the Unitarian Universalist Community Church on Shaver Road in Portage, and that's exactly where our building is. You just go south on Shaver Road, you pass Oakland Drive, and then we'll be on the left-hand side. Um, of course, nowadays, we are virtual, like most churches, um, for the sake and love of our community. Um, we are physically distancing um, until this virus right, runs its course or we find a cure or, or there's a vaccine for it. So welcome, I love it that you chose to spend this morning with us. I welcome you. Um, I delight being in your company, even if only virtually. I take what I can get. And the song that Nick uh, just gifted us with, with is by Daniel Neymad. He is a contempor contemporary singer songwriter. And uh, both uh, Nick and I really love 
his music. So Nick often sings songs by him. Um, welcome again to our spiritual community. This is a community that centers on principle and um, lives by certain values. We have no dogma. Um, we find that dogma separates. Instead, we have come up with a few principles that we have found that are true and we try to adhere by them. However, to be part of our, belong to our community, you don't have to. I just don't see why you wouldn't. Um, so please allow me to light the chalice, which is the symbol of our faith. And it symbolizes that truth-seeking nature of ours. That is that we, what, what we focus on. We don't focus on our differences. We focus on that which we have in common. And we all seek truth, justice, compassion, love, and kindness in this world. And this light symbolizes just that. So will you please... As I already lit the chalice the words that we usually uh, accompany the lighting of the chalice with is in the light of truth and the warmth of love we gather to seek to sustain and to share <clears throat> and now i invite you into a moment of silence into a moment of meditation just centering so I invite you to find a very comfortable position in your seat. Close your eyes if it is yours to close them. Take a deep breath. And relax. And just focus your attention on your breathing. Breathe in. Follow with your attention the path of your breath and breathe out. And as you breathe out, relax. Relax your muscles. Let go of the tension in your body. Notice your thoughts. Acknowledge them. Thank them for sharing their life with you. And allow them to return to where they came from. No judgment. No expectation. Only on allowing for an opening. An opening of the heart. An opening of the mind. Just notice. And allow. Allow to be without judgment, without expectations, thought, no thought, good.
it is wonderful that at any moment in time we can decide to close out the outside world, go within, center, find our inner peace and re-enter the world from that space, from that spaciousness. And for that, together we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as you are ready, I invite you to gently return your attention to the screen, open your eyes, and welcome. And if you should only be joining us now, I'm Reverend G, minister at the Unitarian Universalist Community Church, and this is our virtual Sunday service. And I am delighted that you chose to join us. Um, the title of my talk today is All Our Call. Um, <clears throat> Those of you, of course, who attend our church regularly know that we have a lot of committees, a lot of teams, and one of them is called Sunday Services. And um, Sunday Services, uh, their responsibility is to find speakers for all the Sundays, uh, make sure that we're scheduled for the year. And um, th this year, we also decided to pick an overall topic for our year and then branch out from this overall umbrella topic and then branch out for each month for a subtopic and then for the subtopic pick sub subtopics. And that's how I am going to develop my talks and that's how we are also going to invite our guest speakers to develop their talks and that's how um, Miriam will also develop her talks based on that um, and her programming with our youth. And <clears throat> those of you who are not familiar with our church, um, just know that we have a wonderful youth program. Miriam is the head of it. Um, and um, when you come to church, um, you, you can, of course, physically bring your children and then send them downstairs to our um, to experience our wonderful programming. And then um, if you are joining us virtually and you are wondering if you could um, find some kind of virtual program for your kids, um, we also do that after service. We have a Zoom meeting with the youth. Uh, Miriam is the leader of that. And uh, I'm almost certain that the Zoom link will show up in the chat. Um, pretty soon so you can share it with your children and invite them to join. And I imagine that it's a little bit difficult because it's unknown for them, um, but hey, it's the way to make connections in this virtual world. Anyway, so that is the general idea of how we are developing our year and the programming for our year. And um, as you all know, um, our church here begins in July. So it has begun and July is usually a month where um, we take off and take a rest and we begin in earnest in August. So <clears throat> I'm just going to show you, you won't be able to read it, but this is the, the schedule for our year. The overall umbrella topic, overarching topic for this year is revolution, is revolution. And of course, considering the times, it is entirely fitting and it excites me, it inspires me because a change must come. And for August, the subtopic is preparation. And then under that topic, we're going to explore courage, resilience, spiritual practice. For September is shifting perspective, for October, broadening horizons, for November, inclusion, inclusivity. December, welcome, of course. In January, renewal. In February, engagement. March, liberation. April, rebirth. May, 
thrive. June, celebration, and July, of course, we rest. Um, so <clears throat> many moons ago, when I came to this country, um, I uh, did a master's program in Ashland, Ohio in, in counseling. That's how I came to this country with this scholarship. And I am Hungarian. And uh, it turns out that Cleveland has a very, very large Hungarian community. And I got in touch with representatives of this Hungarian community. And because I was already a minister, there were two Hungarian churches in Cleveland. I preached at both of them. So I got to know a lot of Hungarians. And uh, so they took it upon themselves to introduce me to the world here in this country for I was brand new to it and I didn't know much about it. And um, one day, um, a couple who um, showed me around town said also, now we are going to lock our doors, our car doors. And then they drove me into this neighborhood, which I, the, the, the um, subsidized living neighborhood, which was overwhelmingly African-American, Black. And then they said things like, uh, this is how they live. This is how they like to live. Majority of them, the majority of them do not work. And uh, it's just the way of it. And look at the neighborhood and look at the, at the condition. So today, I want to talk to you about the wholeness of the story. That telling ourselves part of the story doesn't serve us, certainly doesn't serve the truth. It doesn't create a life that is uh, kind, compassionate, rooted in justice. Um, it cannot inspire us to do the right thing because if we don't know the story, the whole story, how should we know what needs to be done? How should we know how we need to relationship with the entirety of it? And we don't just tell partial stories when it comes to African-Americans, Blacks, um, the subsidized living. We tell ourselves partial stories in every area of life. We do it with the Native Americans. We do it with the Canadians. We do it with all races. We do it with our children. We do it with our neighbors. We do it with our spouses. So the title of my story is we are all called, we are all called to expand the story. Look and examine all the stories that we are telling ourselves and just see if maybe, maybe there is more to it. Maybe there is more to it. And if there is more to it, if we take it all in, then maybe, our perspective will shift. Maybe our hearts will open. And maybe the actions we will take will be differently informed and more appropriate to cause healing, much needed positive change, transformation the wholeness of the story. It happens in every area of life, is when we first get together with our spouses, with our partners, with our wives and husbands, and initially they can't do anything wrong. And then pretty soon they're lazy, pretty soon they are too talkative, not talkative enough. We shrink the story and we just focus in on one aspect. 
and we stop seeing the whole person. We stop relationshiping with the whole person. And then we wonder why is it that heaven turned into hell? Perhaps we can teach ourselves as if we were looking through these large, uh, the camera with the large zoom. Look at them again. See them. Investigate them. Be willing to see aspects of them that you have closed your eyes to. Stories about African Americans. I am reading a book right now which I, I couldn't recommend more. It's called White Rage. Another one that I read and it's also absolutely fantastic, The Color of Law. That is more of the whole story. That is not the story that I heard back there in Cleveland with our locked doors. It's part of that story, but it also explains why that happened. Who caused for that to happen? And why is it so hard to break out of those circumstances? Why is it hard to lift yourself up but you, by your bootstraps? When it's not that you don't get help, but when you try, when you do, you're being stumped upon again. The whole story. And it is our responsibility to educate ourselves if the whole story is not being told by the government, if it's not in the history books, because you see, the stories we tell turn into history. So we have a great responsibility to make sure that we look at the entirety of the story and not just a partial one, and then allow that partial one to form our image and then judge by it, live by it, make choices by it. We need the whole story. We need the whole story about Native Americans not the ones that we conveniently tell around the Thanksgiving table, but the whole story, all of it. What is it that has happened? What is it that is still happening today that is not dry, not right, that needs healing, that needs change, that needs a revolution, that needs transformation? And if there is abuse, how much change would you like to see happen? How much change is enough for you? 10%? 20%? 30%? Or would you like to see transformation, which is 100%? No more abuse. From abuse to no abuse. The whole story about trafficking, the whole story about gender, inequality, the whole story about the LGBTQ community. I was talking to somebody recently who is a friend, an ally, a wonderful human being. And she said, you know, I'm okay with the LGBTQ community. I just, I just don't like it when they taunt it, when they are out in the streets and, and they're obnoxious about it. And sure, that's part of the story. But why did that happen? The whole story is behind it because the LGBT community has been oppressed, pushed down so long, for so long and so hard and so much injustice has been um, doled out to the LGBT community. But there's that one month and in a community one day of the year, when we come out and we show ourselves and it's uncomfortable, but you know what? If LGBTQ community were given all the rights, if LGBTQ community would not be oppressed, if we couldn't be evicted just because we're LGBTQ, if we couldn't lose our jobs just because we're LGBTQ, if we would be just judged by our, um, um, Performance, 
then there would be no need for Pride Month, for Pride Day. The need arose from the whole story. Uh, two weeks ago, we took our grandson to Sogatak. We went to the beach and he is part white, part Mexican, part black. In other words, he is a true American, right? And uh, he is now nine years old and um, he was sitting in the back and we're just driving. He's minding his own business, so are we. And then all of a sudden he says, Grandma, since I am part black, does my black life still matter? Does my black life still matter? A nine-year-old child to have to contemplate these thoughts that tells me that we've created a society that is neither kind nor just, nor good for these children. It's not good enough if it works just for one race. It's not good enough. It has to work for all of us. It's not good enough if it works just for one gender. It has to work for all genders. Inequality. It's not good enough if only some of us are free and some are not. We are all supposed to be free. It's not good enough if only some can have health care and others cannot. It's just not good enough. We need to do better. It's not good enough if higher education is only available to the privileged and not to all who are capable and wanting it. It's not good enough. We have to do better. And sure, we may have to do it incrementally, but it is transformation that we want. I do dream of a world where your gender doesn't define the job, doesn't define the salary that you can make, the places that you can go or not go to. I dream of the world when every human being is looked upon as this piece of life that might be enveloped in this shade of skin. And that shade of skin has no significance. It doesn't matter. We still treat everyone as equal, we treat them justly, with compassion, with kindness, with love and inclusivity. And I do dream of a world where the love of profit is secondary or comes third to the love of environment, love of all life, respect of environment, respect of all life, where profit doesn't drive the value of the environment or of a human being or of an animal. The profit has its place, but it's not the number one most important thing, which it is today. So yes, revolution is the theme for our year. And I have looked back into history and I have looked at different parts of the world and I realized that every time real change came about, there was an upheaval of some sort or another. Very seldomly has, has significant Tremendous change come by just gently, very seldom. Usually there was 
upheaval. It was back in my country when communism ended, there was a revolution in the whole communist bloc where the change came, there was upheaval. There was a revolution. In some countries, bullets were fired, people were lost, but everywhere there was an upheaval. And the upheaval is obviously happening here as well. And then even in nature, you know, first there is nothingness, then everything seems to fall apart into chaos and out of that chaos an order emerges. And that order maintains for a while and then it gradually starts to turn into chaos again and out of that chaos, a new order emerges. That is the whole story. That is the whole story. And I believe that this is happening again. It is happening now and it is happening in this country. And so vote, vote the change that you want to see, go. There's voting happening on the 4th of August and then there's gonna be in November. And both of them are significant. And you know, people always say, this is the most important election of your lifetime. I think this is the most important election of our lifetimes. So vote, whatever you wish to see happen, make it known at the ballot box go and ask your neighbors if they have registered to vote. Ask all your relatives, have you registered to vote? Go vote. Can I get your word, your promise that you will go and vote or send in your early ballot? You can do that too. You can vote by mail now. Vote. Vote the change and the transformation that you wish to see happen. Empower yourself, empower yourself with the whole story in every aspect of your, your life, from relationships to society, to the world community. Be curious, interest yourself in the whole story. Don't be satisfied with partial little truths. If you learned something today, tomorrow dig for more. And then the day after, dig for more. And let that inform your consciousness and your choices. Who knows? It may land you in paradise. And so it is. So now, I also invite you to please support our spiritual community with your offerings, with your generosity, do it kindly, readily. So we may have a word, or, or we may have a voice in this world, a voice that I believe is much needed for we have figured out a way how to live together in spite of our differences and live in a community Create a beloved community that lives in love, compassion, understanding, values the democratic principle and life, lives it well. So please support us. You can do that by going to our Gift Plus app or mailing your check, however it is right for you. I thank you for that. Bring it on, everything new, everything different, everything true. I am ready for my next thing to do. Oh, I know it's gonna be everything new. I'm through crying. I'm through waiting, I'm through hoping against all hope. I'm through longing for something gone that'll never be mine. I think I've finally learned to bring it on. 
everything new everything different everything true i am ready for my next thing to do oh i know it's gonna be everything new i'm through grieving i'm through dreaming that the life i had is ever coming back no more wishing on someone else's star that will never be mine i think it's time to bring it on everything new everything different everything true i am ready for my next thing to do oh i know it's gonna be everything and i've survived many times before broken hearts and slamming I'll be all right, yes I will once more, just as I did back then. I'm gonna rise again, so bring it on. Everything new, everything different, everything true. I am ready for my next thing to do. Oh, Oh, it's gonna be everything new so bring it on everything new everything different everything true i am ready for my next thing to do oh i know it's gonna be everything new oh i no, it's gonna be everything new. Wonderful. Absolutely. This song happens to also be by Daniel Neymar. Um, I have some uh, announcement, an, an announcement to make. So we started meeting virtually twice a week um, after the pandemic hit. We wanted to make sure that our community stays connected, stays in touch, and that we provide um, good support and inspiration as well for our members. Uh, we just wanted to do good, good caring, you know. So we meet Tuesday mornings at 11 o'clock. We call it ha uh, coffee hour with Reverend G. And then every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Um, we meet and we call it happy hour with Reverend G. And then uh, whoever would like to join in can. It's a Zoom meeting. Um, and usually, so if you sign up for our newsletter, um, then um, you will receive an invite to these meetings. You're welcome to join. Um, even if you're not a member of this community, um, if you're just curious, you would like, or you just, hey, want some uh, companionship on a Tuesday morning or a Thursday evening. However, we decided that we would like to uh, redesign a little bit our Thursday evening um, meeting. So right now, what we are aspiring to is to bring in a um, guest, a special guest once a month um, for these, for one of these Thursday evening meetings, the happy hours with Reverend G. And uh, last month, we had a professor from Texas, African-American professor, university professor from Texas, who spoke to us about his experience and gave us good insight and uh, it was just a wonderful conversation so it's a very casual conversation with a special guest um, you can have your the beverage of your choice and then we all can talk um, and get inspired so this coming thursday is going our special guest is Sal sapienza and um, he is a minister now uh, UU, uh, ucc minister in sagata and uh, I met him when I was a unity minister in um, Douglas, Sagatak, that area. And he also wrote a book 
uh, titled Gay is a Gift, and then uh, just recently published another one called Childish Things. So he is going to be our special guest. And uh, I look forward to the conversations with him. And I invite you to join us this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, it's going to be an evening with Sal Sapienza. Please feel free to Google him. Um, my guess is that probably some kind of link to his website appeared in the chat, both on Facebook and here on Zoom. So I hope to see you Thursday at 7 p.m. Our special guest is Sal Sapienza. And then prior to that, remember, we will still have the Tuesday morning coffee hour with Reverend G at 11 a.m. here on Zoom. So I look forward to see you then. And now <clears throat> I'm going to do that, which every UU church does every Sunday. We all engage in lighting the chalice and then we all extinguish it because it's probably unsafe to leave a uh, flame in a building for a whole week. However, this is symbolic of our truth seeking nature. So we are reminded that though, we extinguish the chalice. Say the words with me if you can. If you don't know the trust, enjoy them. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Transform. Transform yourself, transform the world, make it better, make it better for everyone. You are called, and so it is. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>